Am I, am, I, am I lost we're or just, something? We're just about to start. You, you say we already? No, I said wait because this is uh, December 30th and that's a Thursday. Yes. Why are you Why are you doing the Thursday episode? It's like Freaky Friday. We change spaces. Yeah. Instead of bodies, schedules. we change schedules. Mm-hmm. So, hey, doesn't matter. Welcome back. I'm here. It is December 30th, Thursday. This is not the last day of December yet. Two more days till the end of the year before we move on to the next year, 2022 or 2022. How are you saying? 2022. Triple threes. No, triple twos. <laughs> no, you can't say. We're triple. way in the future now. We're in 3033. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's go move on to today's observances. And we have Brigand Day. This, this observance happens two days before end of the year? Well, yeah, you can, eat as, you can eat as much uh, unhealthy food as possible before you go into your new year resolution. Oh, you hit yeah, the gym, you know? True. So bacon, bacon for me, is more like a breakfast food, you know? Yeah, yeah. or, or uh, something you add on a sandwich too. Yeah, you can add a sandwich, yeah. But for me, uh, bacon itself, you eat by itself, right? Usually in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. So how I start my day is I usually put a uh, six strip of bacon, right? In my George Foreman grill next to my bed. So I plug it in, I set my alarm, I plug it in, then when I wake up, I can wake up to the smell of bacon. I don't like that. But one time, I I didn't close my George Foreman grill, and I stepped on it, and my feet got blistered. So I called my assistant out at the office, right, to pick me up. Why? Oh, okay, never mind. It was, it was an office episode. Oh, okay. remember, remember when George Michael he 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 he, lo- he loves to eat the smell of bacon in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. So he put those little mini grill next to his bed, and he forgot to close it. He stepped on it. I understand a lot of people would love the smell of bacon. I don't. Um, I don't. But it, you know, if you smell it every day, I, I kind of get tired of yeah, it. Yeah. Well, know? anything you do every single day. Even coffee. Right? Even coffee. You know. Oh, I can't get. I I, I never get sick of the smell. Of really? Yeah. I, mean, I, I get sick of the smell of coffee too if I smell it every day. Really? I don't. I like the smell of coffee. It perks me up. What know? about bacon and coffee together? I can do that. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Actually, I should get some a little bit later. But I, you know, you know me. I can't drink coffee, right? I can yeah. drink decaf. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, decaf. It's still coffee. It's just decaf. Yeah. Well, the t- caffeine was making me agitated. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, besides the point, uh, BLT. I don't think there's any other. Uh, What's up? Uh, what do you call this thing? Or this is not a very complicated. Uh, I was gonna say show uh, observance. Uh, no, no, no. It's not it's, really. It's, it's plain and simple, straightforward. Bacon day, something that uh, a lot of Americans. You know, find a staple every morning. Yes, yes. Uh, like uh, like you said, right? It's besides breakfast, you can have it in a sandwich, like a BLT. Yep. Bacon, lettuce, and Tomato. tomatoes. 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 Uh, how about this? You can put it in salad. You just need to uh, oh, true, true. Yeah. crisp it up a little bit mm-hmm. and make it a little bit into bacon bits. Or add some flavors. If, yes. if you want to try to lessen your, uh, your, your dressing. You I've know, seen some can... hot dogs that's wrapped with bacon. Bacon wrapped yeah. hot dogs. Uh, no, that, that, that's awesome. like double trouble right there. <laughs> yeah, bacon is awesome in burgers. That's true. But I have a friend, she doesn't like bacon because of the texture. Like some part is soft and some part is crunchy mm. and it just confuses her. And one that's thing I don't like about bacon, sorry. One, one thing I don't like about bacon is cooking it. Because sometimes the fat and oil is... Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That's why you have to cover it when you cook it. Oh, you do? You know? Yeah, uh-huh. I don't. And also, if you try to cover it when you cook it, um, it cooks the the top part too. Yes, it does. So it, you know, it kind of avoids burning yeah. one side if you tend to forget about it. It's evenly cooked. So what were you saying about it? No, I was going to say, am I am I just uh, one of the minorities who uh, like bacon soggy <laughs> or soft instead oh, of crispy? I don't, I don't like it. Because I, I don't know. I, I like I, I just like the the texture of the, the chewiness. Fat. The chewiness of it. Well, it's it's mainly uh, the fat because if it's crispy, the fat gets hard too. That is true. Know? That is true. So, yeah. but I don't know. Bacon, pretty good. Um, there's a reason why it's cut very thin. Yes. And it's being served uh, thin slice. I like it. It's, it's, it's cured. Yeah, I like it very uh, crispy, not too crispy. I'm okay with crispy, but I, uh, when it comes to preference, I would go for soft one. Yes. Uh, Weird. 
Yeah, that's not weird. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Comments below the way you eat your bacon with, how you like it, crispy, does salty. Does it have any flavors? Any, I mean, does it have any other flavors? Saltiness. Uh, no, no, salty. I mean, aside from that, that's pretty much it, right? You don't really, you don't really have like bacon is, apple cinnamon bacon. Oh yeah, that, you can. You can? Oh, okay. But bacon is usually its own flavor. Yeah. Like you have bacon flavored very chips. strong flavor. My bacon flavored oh, dog yeah. food. Yeah, it is. It's a very distinct taste. That's bacon. Moving on to National Bicarbonate of Soda Day with a mouthful. Well, it's also known as bacon soda. Okay. Yeah. So we got bacon and then baking soda. See what, oh. I, see what oh, I did there? Oh, yeah, yeah. You actually see what I did, there, you guys? did a nice pun. Actually, it's not. All right. <laughs> baking soda. Well, baking soda is just a lot of uses. Use. A lot of uses, right? Um, we always have baking soda in the fridge. Yes, it's to absorb odor. Mm -hmm. They can do that. Uh, you use it for cooking, obviously. That's what it's for. Baking, baking, also. Uh, well, what's more to say, really? Baking soda is very uh, universal. Very uh, universal, yeah. Very yeah, useful. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. find it in a lot of household kitchen. Yes. Well, what exactly does it do when it comes to, you know, like different uses, right? It but just traps odor. Oh, yeah. that's why. So the one brand I'm planning to use is what? Arm and Hammer? Mm hmm. Yeah, Arm and Hammer is one. And that's it. Baking soda, you But it's not even soda. No, it's not from soda. No, no. It sounds like that, like the Coca Cola stuff. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. But that is bicarbonate. We use it a lot in our chemistry too, and in the labs. Moving on, we have Festival of Enormous Change at the Last Minute. Why is there a lot of last minute change? Well, because we're going to prepare for the new year. Because us and humans like to procrastinate. procrastinate. That's why. <laughs> so, any unresolved issues grudges, whatever, you try to resolve it mm -hmm. through before the new year begins. Because yeah. you want to start the new year fresh, right? Any unresolved businesses, you just want to get it done. Like pay your bills, your debt, uh, make up with a friend that you had issue with. Spoiler alert, I will have uh, some uh, observance that's kind of similar to this tomorrow. Yes. Uh, but you might want to uh, look forward to that episode. But uh, don't look forward to it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> do you have any uh, anything that you think oh, you yeah, change? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So the one thing that I needed to change was to clean my room before the new year. Because I mean, my okay. room is always a mess. 90, I, 90 yeah, of the time it's I guess mess. it counts as a change. But yeah. I got a lot of things I want to let go. Um, physically guys <laughs> like i got a lot of stuff in my uh, in my storage and stuff like that i'm thinking oh. of selling it off uh, by the end of the year but again this is something that kidneys <laughs> no uh, i mean th this is something that uh like even if it doesn't happen by the end of the year i'm still gonna do it anyways yes. you know, next year so it's not it's not like really a rush you want to get a bulk of it done but pretty much yes yes and what other unresolved issues uh I don't think I have any issues this this year as far as uh, or businesses. personal, uh, well, businesses, true. Um, no, it's more of just like letting a lot of things go to make space for a new one. You are, yeah. you're, you have a enormous change too at the end of this month too, at the end of the year. What is it? You're out of here. Oh. You're on to a new life. That is a now it's supposed to be my for my episode tomorrow. Well, it's it's kind of like a <laughs> intro like a, it's or like trailer. A teaser. It's a teaser into next weekend episode or next day <laughs> tomorrow's episode. But yeah, teaser episode. It's a normal change in your life for sure. I'm trying to think of other stuff that I need to resolve too. So it's a good time to figure out. This is different from a resolution because resolution you're not going to start it until the next year. This one you have to finish it by the year end. Yes, like any so. resolution that's lingering that you want to finish, you want to do it do it uh it's also like, so it's like this before you can start a new thing right you have to finish what you have uh going on currently mm -hmm. so i'm trying to think what i have that's nagging me and i don't think i the last thing was to do was to clean my room and i cleaned it yesterday so it's spotless mm -hmm. Or maybe thing. you got some friends, family members that you haven't talked to for a long time. So yeah, I don't care about that. What? That's not an Come issue on. for me. Like, even if, uh, I mean, uh, even there, if there's only like a few days or a few hours before the year ends and you still have a chance, nah. you can uh, send him a message. You know, you, you know. 2021, uh, two or something. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Have a happy, happy 2023. Just have a happy new year or end of the year. I'm trying to think what I'm forgetting, but. <clears throat> 
If it's if I don't remember it, then it should be a nagging issue, then, right? Nah. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. So that is your last minute change. You have forty-eight hours to do so. A little over twenty-four hours. Yeah. Because you can watch this episode whenever. You can oh, watch yeah, it. That's... You can watch it at midnight. You'll have one minute left. So it'll be twenty-four and one minute. What? No, we're not twenty four one minute because this is the thirtieth and we got the thirty first. No, that's it. If you watched it at midnight. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, listen, Jerry. That's one result. You need resolution. You have to listen to people more. But I did say forty eight because I counted the th today and tomorrow. Yeah, but yeah, it's not gonna be forty eight because we only release the episode like in the morning. I do upload it twelve midnight. Oh wow! Okay. I mean, it's scheduled for twelve midnight. All right, so oh, it is forty eight hours. Who, who, who else is? I don't know. Who else is awake at twelve midnight? Put it in the comment section below. And I would find it weird. Because you should be sleeping at that time. You shouldn't be too, drinking too much coffee. <laughs> yeah, because remember, we got Zoom the next day. So, yeah. Right. We go on to today's history. We have... In 1927, the Ginza Line, the first subway line in Asia, opens in Tokyo, Japan. First subway line in Asia. It's a big deal. Uh, it's still operating to this day. Uh, but it doesn't look like... It probably look like this now, but most of the trains that we see now in Japan are the bullet trains, right? Bullet trains, Super yeah. Super fast, zoop ones. I still don't know the difference between a train and a subway. It, all I know is that subway is underground. Subway, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much yeah, it. Yeah, it's underground. Both both trains can go into a tunnel for sure. The train, oh. or a train can be powered by by coal. The train is powered by coal, and then. So it has to be electric. Yeah, because of course there's no exhaust when you're underground. Yeah, if you have exhaust underground, you're just, you're just filling a tunnel full of like, you know, uh, it's not gas. I don't want to say gas. Fumes. Fumes. Yeah. Fumes. Fumes. Yeah. That's the word for it. Uh, I'm going to go to Japan next year. That's one of my uh, to-do list. Resolution? Yeah, not, not really. Resolution. It's not a resolution. Okay. Well, I guess it's a resolution. List. Bucket yeah. list. You know, it's a resolution. You can say you want to travel the world more. Yeah, there you that's go. That's a resolution. Yeah, that is a resolution. Yeah, right? I haven't traveled last year or this learning year new, because new of, you know. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And maybe I should see. I wouldn't be in Tokyo anyways. Probably check out the games a lot. Get some pictures. You know? Maybe ride it too. I don't know. Speaking of Japan, Japan is known for their uh, fast bullet trains. Yes, you know? sir. Uh -huh. Very convenient. Advances. I mean, what do we have here in Southern California? We got, we got uh, Metro, MetroLink. We have Disneyland. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about like a train. Oh, the MetroLink, the Arc, the Arc, the Arctic one. Arc, yeah. yeah uh -huh. one. Uh, There's one that I forgot. <laughs> Which one? The Metro. No, no. Aside from the Metro, the Amtrak. 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 There you go. The Amtrak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't take public transportation because I don't like, you know being around people oh yeah. anti-social i'm very anti-social but anti when i used to go to la uh when i got here uh -huh. I, I was going to school you, yeah, yeah, you yeah i was i was going to school i i don't know how to drive yet obviously um i was taking the train and it's very interesting you see a lot of different people you yeah know? but then it's for me it is more environmentally friendly because you're taking one car off of the road but for time management, it's not really great. Oh, well, yes, I would say so. Because sometimes you would wait for uh, an hour. And if you miss the schedule, well, not an hour. I think that's an exaggeration. It's just, you know, when you, when you, when you miss the schedule, you have to wait for a fair amount of time yeah. to uh, get to the next ride. So. See, I've never been on a subway. Because subway is more like for like more bigger cities like mm -hmm. Tokyo or New York. You have a more condensed population so you need as much space as you can and they try to put it underground that's how you have subway well for me i when i was in europe right uh i usually take the tram everywhere mm. it's like a above ground subway so it's, yeah. it's not a train it's like a it's like an amtrak it's like the one in uh oh okay i was gonna say it's if it's the one that that's kind of like in san francisco kind of like that yeah okay. yeah yeah but it doesn't have the little bell ding, 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 ding. yeah oh that's that's cool we're actually it does <laughs> i didn't remember now it does have it but I'm not a fan of public transportation. It's, it's, it's useful. It's very environmental friendly mm -hmm. because, like I said, you too. For one person you put into a train or a subway, you're taking one car off of the road. Mm -hmm. One car can cause so much, you know, pollution and stuff like that. True. I mean, you know, uh, public transportation, they're perfect for uh, uh, obviously people who can't afford their personal transportation, like uh -huh. their own car. Uh -huh. Tourists, uh -huh. if they're not familiar with the place. Yes. Right? Because the. Uh, the subways are, they have a bunch of these charts are mm -hmm. very uh, laid out in detail that tells you this stop is at this stop and it's, I don't know these, 
They're very, very uh, tourist friendly because they tell you when the stop is, mm -hmm. duration, how long, ETA. You know what ETA means? Estimated time of arrival? Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, what else? Well, I'm gonna try to check this out uh, when I visit Tokyo, Japan. <laughs> Moving on, on December 30th, we have Bjarne Schustrup. He is. Yes, in 1950. He's a Danish, Danish from Denmark, computer scientist, and he wrote C++ oh, in 1979. Okay. So, JR, you're very familiar. I'm not. Uh, I know of C++, but I don't know how to use it yet. I will eventually. But I do remember how to use it, but I wouldn't say I'm very familiar with it now. So it is a coding language, so you use for making computer stuff, right? Uh, uh, software, software, programs, yes. So it is a general purpose language. It's kind of like the language that we speak. We're speaking English right now, right? Mm -hmm. But this is for human language. <laughs> C++, it is a language for computers. So when you type stuff up, a bunch of letters, numbers, dash, whatever, right? The computer can read it and they execute, execute, it, yeah. execute the information or instruction you tell it to do. So, uh, can, you tell, can you tell us a little bit what you know about C++? I don't know much about it, but like I said, I'm going to learn. It is, uh, well, you, you pretty much explained it. I oh, mean, yeah, you know, yeah. um, if I go deeper into it, it's just going to sound more complicated yes. and you know, unnecessary. But yes, just like what you said, mm -hmm. uh, it is a programming language. Yes. Uh, one of the uh one of the older older ones. versions of because because there's a lot of uh, programming languages now that cater to to uh new audiences yes. to, to get them hooked up when you say hooked up like Mobile you know it's apps. easier it's easier to like there navigate are yeah there are templates that you could just start off with yes uh there are auto fill yes which means instead of you typing the whole command it, it gives you the option to finish it, it up which one it predicts what you're gonna type anyways yes yes so, I mean, those are those are convenience, but it's as a, as a programmer, I think it's always nice to learn to learn how to code. No, I, I, I from start I agree. to finish, I you agree. know. So I you agree. would be familiar with what it actually means. It's um, kind of like uh, this is like learning how to ride, drive a manual car before mm -hmm. you go to automatic. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Um, but then, again, but then again, I'm looking at it both ways. Right. Uh, at the same time, uh, since we have uh, modern technology now, I mean, the modern technology we have now tends to uh, make people multitask more. Yes. A lot of people can't afford forget. to. They yeah. forget. Well, I mean, I was going to say a lot of people can't afford to le keep learning the basics and stuff. Yes. So if there are any convenience that they could add in a software. It's time management. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like that. So C++, right? When we say plus mm plus, -hmm. it's also uh it's actually a way color. There, there's a C program. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then uh, C plus plus is basically it came from. It's like an offspring. Yes, yes. It, uh -huh. it, it gave birth to. It. Uh, I think a few months ago we were talking about another coding language. It was called Fortran. Mm -hmm. Fortran is, is a really, really uh, not not basic. I don't want to say basic. It was a old language that was still used today too in, in NASA. Yeah. 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 It's, there's a bunch of a lot of languages, and like it's, like you said, right. The more modern uh, coding languages are more easier for normal people to pick up and learn. Yeah, yeah. Super yeah. plus. Do you have, remember having nightmares when you learn it? No, not really. really. Because I was interested in learning it. I mean, I guess you're only gonna have a, a nightmare if you don't like what you're doing, what so you're learning. You know. On a scale to one to ten, how will you rank in difficulty? Difficulty. Uh. I'm gonna say I think it depends on what you wanted to use it for. Right. Um, well, when I was when I was using C++, I'm not using it anything for graphics heavy. Oh. Okay. You know, even though it's possible, I'm I'm just more using it for database purposes. Yeah. For me, I want to use for database like, purposes or you know, grocery stores, mathematical inventories and stuff like that. Financials. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you guys went to a grocery store and you happen to get a peek of the cash register. Some of them are not visually appealing. It's no. like black and you know black screen with white text or green text and stuff like that that's calculations yeah that that's how uh that's how i use the c plus plus before oh. but of course it, you can use it uh making more websites than that. websites can i you? i think i'm I, no, actually, i'm not sure no because it's a programming sure language for for software not web app or not not web okay. development you know See, i'm just learning too but like i said uh it is interesting and it's usually for uh 
data management, and which makes sense because uh, beyond Shustrup. If I'm not mistaken, he worked at Morgan Stanley as managing director. So Morgan Stanley is an investment bank. Okay. So you know we have that much law amount of money, right? And you want to have uh, information, statistics, you need a really fast computational language, and. You know, well, be, since we're talking about creative, yeah, since we're talking about computers, uh -huh. if you guys have time, it's really awesome to learn about the history of computers, how we came from yes, analog tapes and stuff yes. into digital. That's just you know like it's 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 kind of hard to imagine if you haven't really seen or witnessed at least a documentary of how it you know it came from one to another. I agree. Which is it, it's just amazing. It's like your TV. Yes. You know, the evolution but, of your TV and your computer. Mm-hmm. I like it's like we were talking about the, just real a side side tangent. It's like computer was really big. It filled up an entire room. Like your room that you're in right now, yeah. you can fill up mm -hmm. that room. Now it's like in the palm of your hand. I, I know, it's which amazing. is more, by the way, more it's powerful mind, than the ones they had in one room. Yes, you know, way more. Like twenty of those or whatever. But so be honest, true shop, right? Like I said, he's a computer scientist, uh, and he he works at uh, Morgan Stanley Investment Bank. So when you think of investment bank, right, you have a lot of data and analytics that you need to focus on mm -hmm. to get the right investment. And a computer program language that can do that is very useful. So happy birthday to Mr. Sustra. Just imagine making your own language. Yeah, I know. I mean, would you make your own language? <laughs> I probably would, but it's not going to be that good. Yeah. <laughs> no. A critical error. <laughs> All right. Moving on, we have Uruguay. What are we looking at? Oh wait, what? Come on! I hated that you you took my Thursday episode. Now it would look like or it would sound like I copied you because that's what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow. Well, I'm just talking about the I'm just using the capital as a backdrop. Okay. I'm not talking about the capital, but it's multi video. So no, I, <laughs> multi video. <laughs> is that multi video? It's multi video. Oh man, I've been saying multi video the whole time. Monte video. But yeah, I don't think they have a word video there. <laughs> I keep saying video. When I see the word video, I say video. But yeah, but but that makes sense because when you say radio, they're Spanish, right? When, when people say radio, they're supposed to say rodeo, rodeo drive. Oh, that I didn't know. Let's see, wow, okay, Monte Video. No, because I had a, I was like blanking out a little bit because I'm like, wait, I, no, I was calling it Monte Video before too, but I was like, what? no, no, probably no, 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 I wasn't blanking sense. out. I wasn't blanking out, but that. Oh, okay. Because I thought we I picked the wrong uh, country. You think it's Monte? No, 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 it's not that, it's not okay. that. I thought I picked the wrong country because I saw us doing Uruguay last week. So I didn't think it was this week. Could we record yours earlier? Oh, oh, so right, I was right, like, right, right, right. I was like, wait, wait, did I pick the wrong wrong country? Because last week I didn't have a Friday episode. So I thought yeah. Uruguay. Yeah, you skipped the Friday episode last All week. Right. Yeah. So I thought Uruguay was for last week. So when I saw it right now, I'm like, wait, did I pick the wrong country? <laughs> but I picked the right country, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, uh -huh. awesome. Because you did, we recorded for your Tuesday episode. Mm -hmm. Right, OK, cool. So it is Uruguay. And this the capital that you see right here is Monte Video. Video. Uruguay it has a legacy of artistic and literary, literary tradition. So they have a lot of uh, arts, the culture, um, literature, books, novels, good stories written by Uruguayans. Uh, it, even though it's a small place, um, it is it brings a lot of different cultures into it, right? You have a lot of uh, European influences from, well, you know. Usually you're going to see the influence in either food, structure. Yes. Uh, what else? Uh, literature. Literal, oh yeah, literature. Music, mm -hmm. uh, movie and stuff like that. Well, the two contributing uh, European influences are Spain and Portugal. Okay. So, you know, the Spanish and the Portugal, they sell through the seas, conquering whatever they can conquer. They However, were the powerhouse back in the 1500s. It was, they were, they were. They have a bunch of like this fleet of ships. However, in eight, from 1857 to 1940, right, there was a large wave of European immigrants and they were mostly Italian, mm. right? So like all you know, Spanish influence. So now you got Spanish, Portuguese, and Italian. Italian, but other too, like German. And other oh, stuff there like you too. go. Other, there's more smaller, but they're there. Other European country. I mean, it it adds up. Yeah, it know, does add culture. So. Multicultural. It's kind of like America, multicultural. Um, uh, like most Spanish country, they, they, 
the sports of their choice is football. Okay. Yeah, football. Just like another European country. Just like another guess. European country. They're mostly uh, around over sixty percent of them are Roman Catholics. Okay. Yeah, because Spanish influence again. But they do have like their indigenous people and their indigenous culture, like Pisces and like in the countryside. What do we call the people in Uruguay? Uruguayan? Oh, okay. I'm just guessing. Oh, <laughs> so I'm uh, I don't know. Uruguayanese? No, it doesn't sound right. We need to look it up. People from I think I think you're right the first time. People Uruguayan? from Uruguayan. Uruguay. Uruguayan. I was right. Okay, there you go. Uruguayan. <laughs> Uruguayanese. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't sound right. Oh, there's some people who are like, uh, you know, South American that has East. Yeah. Or Chilean. Brazilian. What are South American country? Ecuadorian. Uruguayan. Paraguayan. Paraguayan. I, I guess. Moving on to Planet of the Day, we have. Peach or Prunus Persica. Mm. You like peach? Yeah. I like peach. Mm -hmm. I like peach tea. I like it as a fruit, I like it as a tea, I like it as a juice. And I, I like it as a pie. Oh yeah, peach pie. Yeah. Or cobbler. I like it as a oh, cobbler yes. too. Peach cobbler is very good. Yeah, I love peach cobbler. What can I say more about the peach? Well, it is very universal. They're sweet. Wow, well, you see it? They're pretty good. Pretty They're kind of like between apples and oranges. The word they kind of relate, they're closely related to the apple. There you go. Right. Orange is not so really. Uh, why would you say it's like an orange? I don't know, maybe the sweetness. Color? sweetness. No, 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 not color, but more like the Orange sweetness. is not, not that sweet. Texture. Depends on the orange. Some uh, oranges are uh, sweet. Oh, oh I, I don't like it when it's sour. You like it sour? No, because it, 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 it uh, what it calls, ruins my face. No. <laughs> if, it's, if it's sour orange, I don't like it. I prefer that as a juice. Yeah, yeah. Sour orange juice, I like that more. Sweet. You want to take a bite in it and it's, it's like, sour. Oh, what's yeah, wrong? Might even, oh, you know what you think about? You think of that one, uh, I think it's pomelo. Pomelo? It's like, uh, like a more citrusy, citrus, citrus 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 <laughs> citrus citrusy, citrusy version of the orange. It's like a lemon yeah. hybrid. You know what I'm talking about? But peach. When I think of peach, I think of uh, Georgia peach. I can think of anything. It's just the fruit. <laughs> just the fruit, yeah. Really good, though. We'll be honest. Fruit that has a lot of uses. Yeah. Exactly. It's very tasty, too, right? Yeah. And you know what animal finds it tasty? The earwig. Oh! Or ficula auric auriculari. Earwig. So that was earwig. Earwig. Wig. Okay. So, auricular is kind of like your ear, which makes sense. That's why it's called earwig. You know why it's called earwig? Back in old England, they call it the ear wiggler because there it's a myth that they crawl in your ear and wiggle in your ear. Oh, ear really? So these guys are a little bit of pests. They're observed eating peaches. Oh, okay. And apricots, you know, same family, the droops, you know, the little heart stone, heart stone fruit. The, 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 so, I guess the back part or the tail part yes. looks interesting. They got like it has two a little pincer. The, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, so, wait. That's the back part? Yeah, that's the back part. Okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> because the, the more bigger part that you see but, to your left of your screen, mm -hmm. that's the, the, the abdomen and it has a little two pincer like. Uh, okay, because usually when you say pincer, it's going to be like, by your uh, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, or well, closer to your head, not at your back. Yeah. So, uh, so that's interesting. When you see those two things, you know it's a male. Okay. If it's just one appendage, it's a female. Oh, okay. The earwig can also fly. It has a wing that is underneath near the thorax, at the top of the chest, the little upper body. And the head kind of reminds me of uh, ants. Mm. Yeah. So that's an earwig. This one looks more of a, like a roach to me. Yeah. I think it has uh, something to do with the wing part right there. You oh, see the wing part? Yes. But I think it's the color. The wing The wing is a little bit smaller. Uh-huh. <clears throat> smaller than uh, its body. But you see the abdomen, the little bottom part, the lower body is more segmented. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it's a little bit different. Uh, these guys are, ah, uh, I don't like them. They're creepy. <laughs> I find them creepy. But I like I said, they're, they're a good pest to uh, peaches. Moving on to our day, we have Jar of Peaches by Claude Monet in 1866. So, Claude Monet is a contemporary of Vincent van Gogh. Mm -hmm. You know, Probably during the same period of time too. Oh wow! Look at it. look look at the uh, countertop right yes, there. Yes, it's like granite. <laughs> I was right? gonna say yeah, it's like granite. Uh, you have peaches on the outside and peaches in the 
in a jar and it's probably preserved, it's being preserved. And I like preserved peaches because you know you can save it for another day. Because sometimes fruits are out seasons. Mm -hmm. You want to keep them and preserve it, or you just want to make them more softer. Or you can make them as jams or preserves. Right. Yeah. Is I had a sad story about that. Is uh, this week I bought some uh, really nice peach preserves from a marketplace. It's really expensive, like twelve dollars for a small jar. Okay. I was so excited to eat it, right? When I was going to work, I opened the back of my car. Oh no! And it fell out and it broke, and I was bummed out. I really wanted those peaches. And then you have to clean your car too. No, the jar car is fine. It, okay. it drops onto the the asphalt. Oh, oh, okay. So when the drop, it broke the jar, but the jar was still in kept in shape. But there was like a bunch of shards of glass, so I like, I don't want to salvage it because I might eat glass. Yeah, well, of course, yeah, yeah. You you guys don't want to do that if you got some food yeah. and then uh, it, the the container happened to broke or yes, to break. It compromised. Yeah. You yeah, don't you wanna, don't want to. Yeah, just kind of let it go. It. So. But uh, peaches, I love it in peach tea. Peach tea is one of my favorite drinks. Yes. And this is a jar of peaches. Well, going back to the painting. Yes, uh, sir. Generally, the painting looks awesome to me. But what actually makes it more awesome is the reflection part right there. Yes, right. I, yes the reflection. I, I mean, the, the, yes, it's one thing that you're able to paint something. But to paint also the reflection, that's that's another level of skill. On the granite right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. You got, you got, because you got to make it, you got to make it look like a reflection, not just like a mirror of of uh, what you drew. I agree. And this one really definitely makes it, made it look like a reflection of the bottom part. Because it's there. faded, right? Yeah, yeah. I really like the how you drew the countertop, the granite. Mm -hmm. It's like it looked like a bunch of squiggles, but it just. Worked. I can't believe it's the 1800s or late 1800s. You know, like these paintings are, Amazing. I would say more more modern in a way, yeah. but. But, uh, I guess it's ahead of its time that time, the, the, that that decade or that. And you year. look at yeah. And you look at you. Uh, you know how you say you see the reflection on the countertop. Mm -hmm. How about the? I like how he managed to capture the shape of the jar itself, the glass jar. Uh huh. You see true. a little bit of reflection of the light, a little bit on the top of the. No, jar. that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Right there. It, it has this little bit of a curvature to it. I really like that the definition. Moving on to the science fact of the day, we have amygdalin. Amygdalin is 20 carbons, 27 hydrogen, 1 nitrogen, and 11 oxygen. So amygdalin came from the Greek word amygdala, meaning almond. It's naturally occurring almond? chemical. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's naturally occurring, uh, naturally occurring chemical compound found in many plants, notably in the seeds, the kernels of apricots, bitter almonds, Apples, peaches, cherries, and plums, those stone fruits, right? Uh, there was a promising uh, research that was used for uh, medication, but it found out to be a little bit too toxic. And This, this chemical right yes, here. Yes, and the one thing that I'm going to focus on is where is the nitrogen? Do you see the nitrogen near the ring, right? The little ring structure, carbon ring? Mm -hmm. It's connected to a carbon, and it has a triple bond. There's three lines connecting carbon to uh, the nitrogen. Right. And that so is called a uh, cyano group, also known as by itself is cyanide. Oh, wait, what? So cyanide, it causes cyanide poisoning, so it's very toxic. Oh, but it's in the seeds. It's not in, the, in seed. the fruit. No, it's in the seed. So when people- You think that's why- People say don't eat a lot of apples, apple seeds, because you can get a accumulation of the C nitrogen, right? Mm -hmm. It's the cyanide. Oh, and, so that's why. Yeah, poisoning, yeah. So that's why. A bunch of uh, the seeds, you have to be careful about. That's just, I mean, it's crazy and amazing at the same time to think that- It's a carbon uh, nitrogen, that's it. But but pretty much like you have you have something edible, but yes. a part of that- Is toxic. Is toxic. Yes. Correct. Right? It's not like, all right, uh, here's the food, you'll go eat the whole thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, a good example is fugu. Fugu is a Japanese delicacy made from pufferfish. Oh, but puffer fish are also known to be poisonous. Exactly, it has a TTX, tetra toxin, toxic. Ah, uh, I forgot. But it is a very, very neurotoxic chemical. Mm -hmm. So the same thing with this too. Uh, cyanide, very very dangerous. Is used in like you know rat poison. Right, right. Stuff like that. Um, found in the seeds. Remember, just a seed. You can eat the rest of the flesh or the flower mm -hmm. of the fruit. 
Apricots, bitter almonds, well, the word amygdala came from almonds, so yeah, you expect it in bitter almonds. Apples. So peaches has them too. Peaches has them too, but it's mostly in the seed. But who who eats a seed? That's true. You you <laughs> plant it. <laughs> you know? seed? You plant it. Right. So that is amygdala. Moving on to the word of the day, we have heirloom. H e i r l o o m. What does it have to do with peach? Is it now? It means a valuable object that has belonged to a family or for several uh, generations. Yeah. So that's the common. Uh, Definition that we know what heirloom is, right? It's like uh, ancient, not ancient, it's like an old relic in your family. Like yeah, could be an emblem, could be a jewelry, a painting, could be an artifact, yeah, painting, uh, artifact. even clothes. I mean, you know. Yes, but it also another definition for it is denoting a traditional variety of plants or breed that of animal, plants or animal. Oh. That is not associated with large-scale uh, commercial agriculture. Oh, so okay. you have the common uh, tomato, <laughs> but you also have the heirloom tomato. Mm. So the tomatoes that we know commercially is little red, uh, plump, yeah, uh, fruit. Uh, tomatoes are fruit because they have seeds. But the heirloom, they're more, they're kind of more like a pumpkin shape. They're more discoloration, a little bit okay, orange, so, a little so bit yellow. Okay, so they look less appealing. Yes, I mean in general. That's are, why they're not going to be sold, I guess. Yes. So. so those seeds are from the ancient, ancient, undomesticated wild tomatoes. Okay. So that's what I'll call heirloom. They're passed down from generation to generation, right? So they are unaltered by, you know, uh, industry that wants to make a more versatile, resilient tomato that is resistant to pests, that has a longer shelf life. I guess it looks better. Brighter color. More suited taste, right? It's genetically engineered to what we know now as the common tomato. What? But you can find heirlooms tomato in like farmer markets, more niche. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start looking up uh, heirloom tomatoes, what they look like. Yeah, uh, yeah, you should. Uh, but those, that's what I'm talking about, heirlooms. So we have like heirloom peaches too, right? Ancient peaches that have like, like we're talking like 10,000 years, right? Before they were more commonly known, commercially sold in stores. So, that's one thing I do, like when I said, when I have my own house or when I have a nice home of myself, when I retire, I do want to have a garden where I have a bunch of heirloom, heirloom plants? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I'm a, I have a green thumb. I like planting stuff. <laughs> so, heirloom ties it up with all the stuff that we talked today is peaches. Peaches, one of the pests for the peaches is an earwig. Why is it called earwig? Well, myth says it crawls in your ear when you sleep and wiggles in your ear. Yeah. It's also it, it eats the peaches. I'm just thinking about it, kind of makes it. Ugh. The painting that we had was the jar of peaches by Claude Monet. A picture. Very awesome painting. Preserve. By the way. Yes, very awesome painting. And we were talking about the amygdalin, the little chemical compound that's found in a bunch of uh, stone fruits. Uh, it's mostly found in seeds, and it's really toxic because it has cyanide in it. it causes cyanide poisoning. And heirloom is the word of the day, which is you know, an old traditional variety of plants or animal just we didn't talk about animals but they have like, oh really it applies to animals there yeah, animal okay. animals it's kind of like uh, a wild version of uh, the domesticated dog heirloom you know old or like something that you pass out from generation to generation mm -hmm. this is your grandfather watch you know i'm passing down to you mm -hmm. yes so that is well before we wrap up we had to wrap up this year too and try to Finish any unresolved uh, right, businesses right. that you yeah. have. Again, you got at least two days, two yeah. more days. And maybe for a new resolution, maybe my one of my resolutions is maybe to learn C++. Okay. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, that's a good re resolution. And speaking of which, I always tell everyone, I think I did tell you guys on Zoom also, at least at this point in time now, is that when you make a resolution, you try to make it realistic. Yes, realistic. Don't be like too far ahead. I'm going to be a billionaire. Yeah, yeah. Julian. I mean, you know, you take few steps before you can actually run yes or you uh what was that saying you have to learn to crawl before you can run before you can run yeah because uh, what happens if you put your your resolution far ahead and you couldn't even do like a, a tenth of it or a quarter of it you get discouraged and when you get discouraged you don't feel like doing it at all doing it at all anymore so it's you know so how is this it's one of my resolution <clears throat> instead of being a millionaire i will probably get a positive 
bank balance. <laughs> oh yeah, you start with that. You start with you that. Start you with take, out, take out the negative first. That's take out the, your death first. The red numbers. Yeah. Take out the red numbers. When you do that, then you follow it with the the next step. Or maybe right. New Year's resolution, resolution is a uh, better money management. Better money. Yeah, of you, course. You do, of better, course. you do better money management, right? The the red will go away by mm -hmm. itself. It's passively will go away. So, thank you guys for joining us for my last episode of the year. Last episode. We have one more before we close out the year. That'll be we'll have the last, last episode. That's yours. Uh-huh. And enjoy the rest of your day. Yes. Bye. Uh, I'm always out of camera. I'm out of shot. Bye. Oh. <laughs>